And within two weeks, an amazing set of events happened. Our police chief and one of his senior staff had to resign. Two senior executives from Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation had to resign. Rupert Murdoch's bid to control the whole of satellite TV in Britain uh, collapsed because he had to withdraw. And he had to close the News of the World, Britain's best-selling Sunday newspaper with a 168-year history. He had to shut it down because advertisers threatened to boycott, readers threatened to not read it anymore, and the people who stock the newspaper, the retailers, threatened not to sell it. So, uh, uh, and as if that wasn't enough, and just to complicate the affair, the Prime Minister, the current Prime Minister, Mr Cameron, had to institute a, an inquiry, a public inquiry, under a judge in which people would have to give evidence on oath. And he did that out of a sense of great personal embarrassment because the Prime Minister, against advice, had hired a former editor of the News of the World to be his press advisor, even though he was warned that this man may indeed be muddied uh, by being connected to uh, hacking. It took place while he was editor. So uh, it was a political crisis, a crisis for our police, and a media crisis. So what turned out at the beginning to be an inquiry simply into phone hacking then turned out to be an inquiry into bribery. And that led on to people showing that they'd been covering it up inside the organization and led to the police then arresting people for perverting the course of justice. So we have four police operations. We've had 80 arrests, including 50 journalists. Um, and we've had 13 people charged to appear next year with perverting the course of justice uh, and also intercepting phone mail messages without permission. So um, as scandals go, I can honestly say in my lifetime, this is the biggest media scandal ever, uh, and I've looked back through history and I can't see a greater one except and unless you, you know, right back to the beginnings of when we had to fight and struggle to achieve press freedom in Britain. But if you, if you just leave that aside, which was a different matter, this is an unprecedented media scandal because it involves politics and involves the police and involves the media. Okay. Um, you're talking about the, the, the historic uh, uh, sort of meaning of this all, and, and uh, if you look back at the media, you know, uh, during, f well, 100 years, you, you'll find amazing things that are actually sort of culminating in, in, in these things that are happening now. But I would like you, Roy, to first uh, explain the concept of manufacturing consent, because this is something that, that many people, Noam Chomsky, for instance, have been talking about for the last 20 years as something very essential when we try to understand how the media work and the connections to, to, to politics. The one of the problems facing uh, the situation involving phone hacking was, was this organization uh, run by Rupert Murdoch uh, especially different from any other organization? Why, why, did, why did the prime minister get so close to Rupert Murdoch? Why did he hire one of his former editors? Um, during the uh, inquiries, we discovered that the Prime Minister spent an enormous amount of time fraternizing uh, with Rupert Murdoch's uh, employees and Rupert Murdoch himself. They had to reveal how often they'd met and so on. And so questions were asked really about ownership and about the nature of ownership. Um, and one of the problems, I think, was um, that Murdoch needs to be seen in terms not just of himself, in British, ter in British maybe other terms as well, but as, as part of a system. Um, I, one of the reasons we, we I think, criticise Murdoch is because he seems, or has claimed, laid claim even, to influence the outcome of elections. I don't think that it did. I think it's more complex than that. But it's certainly that view that, that um, our, uh, the form of ownership uh, and the r way that ownership of newspapers and the press get so much into bed, if you'll excuse that expression, with politicians means that we must question the nature of ownership itself. 
that there must be some kind of structural reason why these people, why these people do the bidding, as it were. The press does the bidding of the economy and of the polity. And this is the theory of manufacture of consent, that in fact uh, it's a propaganda that we all operate uh, un un uh, unwritten rules in which we stand up for a certain system. Now, if you are a media owner, what you most want to do is to make profits. Or at least you need to actually make profits, if not from the newspapers, from other areas of your concerns in order to feed those newspapers. So you are bound, naturally, to support the system, the free market, capitalism, if you want to call it that. You are bound to support that. And your newspapers will reflect support for that and marginalize every idea which confronts it, which goes against it, alternative ideas.